What's up my brothers and my sisters from another mister. So today we're going to do a comic book review of Sam and Twitch issue number three where Sam and Twitch are back into the crosshairs of internal affairs. Brought to you by Rated Comics. Let's get to it. The issue starts off with a man and a woman on a date at a KISS concert. The man, his name is Nick. He waits for his girlfriend to come out the bathroom of a stadium so they can go to their seats and watch themselves some kiss and maybe get a kiss. So they take their seats and there's a little back and forth between Nick and his girlfriend about the seats being nosebleeds. He claps back at her saying the tickets were free and free is free right so stop bitching. Well after a little bit of bitching, just a little bit, a man passes by Nick who by the way resembles the man with the white fedora hat and the trench coat that Sam had an encounter with in the last issue. After he passes by, Nick feels that he's been poked. He gets up aggressively and angrily calls out the guy. Nick lets out a loud sneeze and after he keeps sneezing, he sneezes a couple more times and finally blood comes out of his mouth. He continues to bleed and eventually falls to the floor. The woman calls for help as she tries to wake Nick up. In this panel right here, we see a woman waiting for Detective Burke. We learn that the woman is Detective Barbara Rodriguez as she introduces herself to Detective Burke. Burke is in trouble because he fired a bullet from his gun which killed Shift Lieutenant Barnes. But there's more to the story from the previous issue. You and I as the reader know better because Sam shot Lieutenant Barnes' head after that head was thrown at him. So there was another guy who ripped apart Shift Lieutenant Barnes' head with his bare hands. Barbara asks whether this happened before or after he shot him. Burke has no answer to this and remains silent because he feels no matter what he says, it will incriminate him. Burke then snaps in front of Barbara when he keeps repeating that he's a good cop. He doesn't deserve how she is treating him. And rightfully so, but she doesn't know any better at this point. Barbara says that they can continue this some other time when he has a lawyer present. As for Burke, he says that he's been through a lot. He tells her that she hasn't gone through the hardships that he has. She doesn't know what it feels like to say to a person's loved ones that they died for nothing. Barbara then begins to tell her story once Burke stops speaking. She tells Burke that she's been through hell and back. The place where she's lived, central Pennsylvania has not been short of hell. A place that has been constantly on fire for 35 years and where her parents still live. She isn't telling Sam Burke all this to say that she's better than him because she's been through hell. No, she tells him this because she wants Sam Burke to believe her when she said that she was put on this earth to see the right things get done. The right things because she's lived in hell. Then we switch to a woman who was with Nick at the concert earlier. Nick is in the operating room entirely covered and the doctor, the medical examiner, Casey McCory comes in and she is tired of having to tend to bodies all damn day. She reads the word San Giacomo and stops for a moment. You got to love how this myrtle puzzle is slowly starting to come together. Next we have Burke telling Barbara all about the partnership with Twitch. Barbara says it was Twitch who pinned him down. He told her all the secrets. Twitch told all the secrets when he met her at the bar. Barbara then proceeds to click a button on the tape recorder. What plays on the recorder is all the intimate details that Twitch said about his partner Sam. As it read through those texts, it's pieces of what Twitch said in the previous issue. Correction, issues. You could only imagine what he's going through after hearing his partner kissing and telling, so to speak, not pun intended because of the kiss concert, but anyways, Sam stops the recording and breaks the song, bitch. All Barbara can do is tell the other guy to put in a request for another tape player. Sam heads out of the interrogation room and charges toward Affleck, the cop who pointed Sam to the man in the fedora hat and trench coat in the previous issue. He pushes and punches him in the face. Burke shouts at him that he ratted him out, setting him up. Affleck then says he has no choice because he has a wife and a kid. He can never put him over the two of them. Burke tells him off, cusses him out some more, tells him they are done. As Sam leaves, there's a man in a trench coat from earlier waiting to strike. Sam comes face to face with Twitch. He tells Twitch that he can't believe he ratted him out. He trusted him, but now that trust means nothing. Twitch tells him, obviously defeated and sad, and he tells Sam that he needed someone to talk to and he met this girl at the bar. Barbara, not knowing who she really is and thinking she was unassuming or a normal person, Burke tells him that if he needed someone to talk to, he could have gone home to his wife. 
and Twitch replies that he got kicked out of his home because he chose Burke over his wife and kids. There's more to that. Twitch's wife told him that if he didn't go back to the forest to start providing decently from the family, then in her eyes, Twitch chose Sam over his family. And this is pretty deep because Twitch said that they left the force because of how corrupt it was and Sam and Twitch went into the PI business themselves. But money as a PI was tight and it was not as steady as being on the force. Hence, his wife kicking him out the house. The conversation between the two is interrupted by the Dr. Casey McCoy who inspected the body of Sanji Okomo earlier. She explains the situation to the two of them and says that she doesn't think it's the influenza of some kind. She, she tells them she feels it could be a genetically modified hyperbuck injected into Sanji Okomo and his red blood cells are generated even after he's dead. Just as she's about to complete her assessment, another sneezes her. They run over. Then it comes the officer whom Burke punched earlier, Affleck, and his condition is the same as Nikki Asangio Como's in the beginning of this issue. He is bleeding. After sneezing several times and blood is constantly running out of his body, he finally decides to let out the beans because his life is about to end anyway. He collapsed after saying, Udaku, Udaku, several times. The three in the room can't make up what it means, but Burke tries to talk him as he shouts Affleck several times, but it's useless. There's no point. Affleck bleeds out and falls to the ground dead. And that is the end of this issue of Sam and Twitch issue number three. What you guys think of this comic? Comment below, let me know. And also link in description if you wish to add this comic book and or any of our other rated comic book exclusives to your comic book collection. Support the art, support the industry. Lastly, this review is sponsored by Coffee because it is 5.30 in the morning when I'm doing this because my kids are asleep. But anyways, this review is sponsored by Coffee. So if you'd like to buy your boy a cup of coffee, link in description. But the greatest compliment you guys can do is by liking this video and subscribing to this channel. Thank you again for watching. Until next time.